Hi boys and girls. Hello. Hope you're doing really well and enjoying your summer holiday so far. We're really glad you could join us for Sunday school today. Now, I wonder if you've been up to anything fun this week because of some summer holidays. We've mainly been just looking after Mostyn, taking him to fun places like the park and other such places where he can have fun and enjoy his summer holidays. Right, off to do your homework. Off you go. <laughs> and um, today we've got some challenges for you that you can join in at home. Now, for these challenges, you're going to need two of our favourite things in the world. Mm. Um, firstly, you're going to need some spaghetti, some dry spaghetti. Some dry spaghetti. And secondly, you're going to need some marshmallows. Mm. You can see that the bag is already open because Beth's already had a couple. Wow. Um, and we'll give you a couple of seconds to grab some of those things if you've got them. Now, if you don't, don't worry at all. You can do this um, another time in the week, maybe. Um, so. Um, Go and get those things now if you have them. We'll see you in a minute. Bye. So for our first challenge, all you'll need is one single marshmallow. Do you want to take one? Yeah, sure. Oh, you need to not eat it yet. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. You've got to get the marshmallow on your head like this. So you might need to move it. If you've got a fringe like me, you might need to move it. And you need to wriggle it down your face and see if you can try and catch it with your mouth. Now, hopefully you're indoors, not like us outside here, because I think mine is going to get really mm. dusty on the Probably. floor. But we'll give you 30 seconds, see if you can do it. Me and Sean are going to verse each other, see who can do it the fastest out of the two of us. Sean's going to put 30 seconds on his timer and we'll see if either of us can catch them from our foreheads down to okay. our mouth. So are I'm just ready? timing it here. I'm going to start. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh no. Bad start. Oh no. It's quite hard actually. Oh wow. It's really hard. The wind. Oh. It's not ideal. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, hang on. Oh, no, that can't count, I don't think. Right, um, eight seconds to go. Oh, I'm nearly there. Four seconds. Oh. Time's up. Time's up. How does it go for you? I didn't even get it there, it just made my eye really yeah, sticky. Mm. I um, just monumentally failed that one. <laughs> so I hope you did better than us. Join us in a minute, we'll go come back for our second challenge. See ya. Hello, we're going to do a game of um, throwing, it's called throwing the marshmallow into the teacup. Um, we did something similar in church. Catchy name. Very catchy name. So we're going to have three shots each. I'm going to be the pink marshmallows. I'm going to be the white ones. And it's basically who can get the best score. And again, this could be something that you try at home. If not, you can maybe ask your parents, if very kind, if you can get some marshmallows and try it um, during the week or sometime. And then maybe you could tell us your score um, via text or something. Yeah, cool. So, okay. should I go first? You go first then. Okay. So you're going to stand quite distant from your cup and then just have a go at throwing them in. I don't know which technique I'm going to go with. Oh, what a shot. Unbelievable. Oh, crossbar. Oh, wow, well done. One. one out of three, very good. Go okay, the pressure's on. Right, come on, Sean. Oh no. Yes? Oh no. Right, I have to get this in. Oh no! Well done, Beth. Well done. Okay, so for our last challenge, our final one, this is where you're going to need your spaghetti. So you'll get some of this handy. Because we're going to see who can build the tallest tower using spaghetti and your remaining marshmallows. Hope you've got some left and you haven't eaten them all. Um, so, I'm gonna, we're going to go against each other. We're going to do three minutes to see how high we can build our tower. So who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be me or Sean? How are your guess? So far I'm winning. Um, and it's up to you how you do it. You can just do them. What are, you, what are your plans? What are you thinking? Mm, I think I'm just going to go for um, just a really tall one without much kind of stability and just kind of really go for it. And just hope for the best. Yeah, sure. basically. For what me, about you? I think I'm going to do like maybe 
doing like triangles mm. usually works pretty mm. well mm. for stability. So sure. maybe I'll go down that route. Well, I wish you all the so best. Have a little think about what you'll do. I will see you in a moment. We'll see who wins between us mm. and see how you can get your tower. Again, if you get a really big one, we'd love to see it. So maybe mum and dad can send us a picture. Okay, are you ready? Should we start yeah. building? Um, I've got mine here and you've got yours. Let's see if we can get the tallest one. Three, two, one, go! Well done, Beth. Um, I think what I would say is our spaghetti lines are probably equal. Yeah, that's However, true. on a technicality, I know it's not <laughs> the most efficient looking building. But my marshmallow, even though it's kind of falling off at the moment, I would say that's marginally higher than yours. So oh. on a technicality, I think yours is look, it's a beautiful building, but I think mine is technically higher. Yours has got five legs. Yeah, but there's nothing in the rules about <laughs> how many legs you could have. Okay, well, maybe yours is slightly taller then. That's a shame. How did you get on, boys and girls? Did you manage to make yours nice and tall? <laughs> Well, I hope you manage better than us anyway. I think it's probably a good thing that I didn't go into engineering, do you think? <laughs> um. So yeah, don't worry if you couldn't join in now. Uh, maybe give it a try later. See if you can get taller than this one. Um, and we'll love to see your results at the end. And maybe more pleasing to the eye than this one. How did you find those challenges? I know for us, we, we found some of them more difficult than others. Mm. And our story today is about someone who had to deal with a pretty tall challenge. Yeah, and if you cast your mind back a few weeks, we did the story about how God had chosen one of many brothers to become the next future king. And if you remember, it wasn't the most handsome brother, or the cleverest, or the sportiest, or even the funniest. But it was the youngest brother who was chosen. And it was David who didn't have the biggest arms or didn't have the uh, biggest brain or wasn't the funniest and the best jokes. But he was chosen to be the next king. And he features in our next story. Yeah, and so today's story is about what happened next. Because it turns out David was about to be chosen for another unexpected challenge. Wow, that's exciting. So we're going to hand over to Chloe now, and who's going to tell us our story about what happened to David. Now, we've heard the story about Samuel choosing David to be king out of all his brothers. But whilst David was still a shepherd boy, do you want to hear what happened next? Now, Saul was still king, and he ruled a people called the Israelites. David and his family were Israelites, but the Israelites weren't getting on with people named the Philistines. Now, the problem with the Philistines was that they had many giants living in their land. One of the strongest and biggest giants was named Goliath. He was over nine feet tall, which is taller than any person recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. He was even taller than Russo, and he would have had to bend way down to get through a regular door. Now Goliath was covered with armour to protect him, and he carried a big spear. Every morning and every evening for 40 days, he shouted to the Israelites in a big deep voice, Hey you! I dare you to find one man to fight me. If he can beat me, we will become your servants. But if I win, you will become our servants. Ha, ha, ha. When Saul and all his men heard this, they were so afraid. Three of these men were David's three big brothers. They were the only one, ones in David's family who could go and fight because they were old enough. Now, David's father, Jesse, heard about the giant and was worried for his sons. He called David out of the fields and asked him to take some food to his brothers and report back how they were doing. So David set off to visit his brothers and take the packed lunch. And as he approached, he heard Goliath shouting his challenge like he did every morning. Hey, you! 
I dare you to find one man to fight me. And if I win, you become our servants. But if you win, I will become your servant. David said, isn't someone going to stand up to this man? He asked the men in the army. Hmm, if not, I will fight the giant Philistine. One of the men overheard this and ran to Saul and told him what David said. King Saul approached David and said, You can't fight Goliath. You're only a boy. And he has been fighting for many years. But David said to Saul, I've had to fight lions and bears to protect my father's sheep. God has helped keep me safe and he will help keep me safe now. It was too bad that Saul, the king, wasn't trusting in God to help him. He didn't know what to do to beat Goliath. But then this young boy called David came and he knew exactly what to do. And he trusted that God would help him. That's why God loved David's heart um, and why he wanted David to become king. So King Saul decided to dress David in big, heavy king's armour to go and fight Goliath. But David thought, this is no good. It's way too big. And he could barely see anything. So David took it off. Because he could barely walk in all that. And he knew that it was God who would keep him from harm. So instead, David went to a nearby stream. And he found himself one, two, three, four, five smooth stones from the stream. And he put them in his pouch and he took his sling ready to go and fight Goliath. As David approached Goliath, Goliath looked at David and thought it was a joke. Goliath thought, David is so small. He thought it was funny that Saul would send him to go and fight him. But David said to him without any fear, you fight with a sword, but I come with my God on my side. And today everyone will know that there is one true God in the land. Goliath didn't care what David said and he moved closer to attack him. David ran quickly to meet him. Reaching into his pouch, he pulled out a stone and he put it in his slingshot and he shot it at Goliath. And the stone hit Goliath right in the middle of his eyes. And suddenly Goliath started to lose his balance and whoosh, he fell straight on the floor, flat, flat on his face with a big thud. David had done it. He had beat the giant Philistine. And when the rest of the Philistines saw this, they ran away. And David became a hero to all people in Israel. Whoa, that was exciting, wasn't it? David was so brave in how he stood up to Goliath when no one else would. He knew that God was more powerful than Goliath and that God could beat him. And you know, it says in the Bible that whenever we face things and situations where we feel a little bit scared or we don't really know, we don't feel equipped for or we don't feel ready for, God gives us the strength and the courage to do the right thing in the right time. And in fact, it says this in Philippians, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that means that Jesus can give us the strength to be brave in all situations. So no matter where we find ourselves, if we're a little bit scared or a bit unsure or something seems far too big for us to deal with, that God gives us the strength to deal with anything. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Should we pray to finish? Mm -hmm. I'll just pray really quickly. Yeah, dear Jesus, thank you so much that you're with us um, every day, that you give us courage and strength to face um, every day, every situation, Lord, you're always with us. And I pray that you be with each one of the boys and girls um, watching today, that you'd bless them and be with them, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Well, um, thank you so much for joining us today. We've, uh, we've had loads of fun, haven't we, It's back. been brilliant, yeah. And um, we'll see you again maybe in the next few weeks, hopefully. Yeah, brilliant. See you, boys and girls. Bye. Beth, can you give me your hand for the dishes, please? Um, I'm just busy at the minute. Okay.